The Story of Soil Part 2 Hello children, I hope now all of you would have understood that soil is an important natural resource. Do you know about the different layers of soil? Alright, tell me what is the topmost layer of soil known as? Correct, it is humus, which is made up of dead and decaying matter. I have a question in my mind and I am looking for an answer. Is the soil similar at all the places and is the soil different at riverbeds? gardens etc let us go and look for the answer in village where two children are in conversation about the same question the objectives of this story are to know about the types of soil and to understand about the qualities of soil this is Nilu and that is Minu both of them had planted a plant in two different pots. Nilu's plant had become lush and green. However, Minu's plant did not grow much and had no fresh green leaves. They were discussing about the same. Oh, Nilu, look, my plant is drying up. I put enough water, kept it in the sunlight and there is enough air also here. Yet it is dry. Yes, Minu, I was thinking the same. I kept my pot in the sunlight, gave enough water, manure like you did. What difference was there between your way and mine? Let us water our pots and see what happens. The girls first water Nilu's pot and then Minu's pot. Look, Minu. The water is seeping slowly in the soil. Some water is still in the pot. It will slowly seep in. Come let us water your pot now. Let us now water your plant. Oh, look Minu. The water seeped in the soil of your pot quickly. Nilu, do you remember you took the soil for your plant from Ramu Kaka's garden? I used the mud from the sandy soil lying outside the house. Yes, Minu. Come, let us do an experiment. To solve our question, let us take the soil from three different places and put water in it and observe what happens. Minu and Nilu take three utensils. Then they walk towards Ramu Kaka's garden to collect some soil. They collect some sandy soil and they take a third sample of soil from Shankar Kaka's field. On returning home, they put the different samples in the three different utensils. Come Minu, let us now pour equal quantity of water in all the three. They pour water in all the three samples but could not understand much. Nilu, I think we have to try something else. This did not help us to observe much. I have an idea, Minu. Let us make funnels out of thick paper. I had learned how to make them in my science class in grade 6. Then we will put the different samples of soil through the funnel into used plastic bottles. We shall place a deep container or plate beneath it. Then we shall pour equal quantity of water in them. I think by doing so, we will be able to see which soil sample soaks more water. I shall go and get three plastic bottles. Mother kept a few away yesterday. Okay, I will make the funnels. Okay, everything is ready. Now let us put this sandy soil through the first funnel. And the soil from the garden in the second. And similarly, the soil from Shankar Kaka's field in this third one. Minu puts the different samples through the different funnels. Then Nilu pours water onto them. Then the girls wait for some time. 
Look, Nilu, a lot of water has passed through this sandy type of soil. I had observed that in this soil the loose sand particles were more, but the soil we picked from Shankar Kaka's field was very sticky and wet. Yes, I think it is a correct observation. I observed that the soil we picked from the garden had an almost equal quantity of big and small particles. Nilu, look, the soil we picked from Shankar Kaka's field let very little water pass through and this sample from the garden allowed some water to pass and some is still there on the top. Yes, Minu, you are right. So does it mean that the plants which grow in the sandy type of soil need less water but the plants which grow in the soil we picked up from the garden need optimum water. Oh, Shankar Kaka's fields have rice sowed and I remember Baba had said that a lot of water is required for the cultivation of rice. So, I think that type of soil would not allow a lot of water to seep through like we just observed in the experiment. I remember I had read that deserts have loose sand and that is the reason very few plants grow there. Like we just saw that the sandy type of soil let water pass through quickly. So I think the plants would be getting less water. And this soil from the garden soaks the optimum amount of water and lets the extra water pass to the roots. Minu, you also used sandy type of soil, remember? Yes, Nilu. The sandy type of soil does not retain water. Your plant wasn't getting enough water and therefore it wasn't growing well. And my plant had soil from the garden and hence it was using enough water. Hence it grew well. This means that according to the size and quantity of particles found in soil and the spaces between them, we can categorize the soil. My teacher had once mentioned that cotton, vegetables need optimum water and rice and sugar cane need a lot of water. Hence, they need different soil. Yes, according to what she told you and our experiment, we can say that there are different types of soil. According to the size of particles found in soil, we can divide soil into sandy soil, clay soil and loamy soil. Hey Minu, you are talking just like a teacher. Just a pair of glasses is missing. Minu, what do you think? What kind of soil does Shammu Kaka use to make the pots he makes? Let us go and find out. So friends, both the girls did such an interesting experiment. I found the answer to my questions. We can divide soil into three types. Sandy soil, it has more loose particles. Clay soil, it is sticky and has small particles. Loamy soil, it has a balance of small and big particles. Now I also want to know like Nilu, that which kind of soil is used to make pots etc. We will meet soon in the next video.